Hey, I'm Becca with the Happy Ever Crafter, and this is part three of a three-part series all about starting your side hustle. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to actually get clients and price your work, but this is part three for a reason. There are two more important videos, part one and part two, before this one, and if you haven't seen those, I really want you to stop this and go watch those first. In part one, we talked about all of the things you should do to get yourself set up for success. And in part two, we talked about the actual tasks I wanted you to do logistically before we get to this part. So at this point, you should have all of that worked out and you're ready to actually start making some freaking money. Am I right? <laughs> so we gotta talk about two things if that's the case. Number one, how to actually find clients. And number two, how to price your work. Both of these things can be really overwhelming, so let's dive into one at a time. First, finding clients. I have a full video about this over here where I go into a bit more depth, but let's go over my basic tips on how to find clients when you're starting out. Number one, tell people. Word of mouth is so crucial. I see so many beginners that hop into a new business and they're just afraid to tell people they know what they're doing because they're self-conscious about it. Listen, your friends and your family are going to be your biggest asset in getting you clients when you first start out. People you know are gonna tell people you know and tell people you know and it's gonna snowball from there. So you can't keep it to yourself and you can't hope that only strangers are gonna find you. When I first started, all of the business I had was from friends and the more friends you get, the more friends they tell and then people you don't know at all will start coming to you eventually. But it has to start somewhere, so don't be afraid to tell people. Number two is social media marketing. If you don't like social media, I'm afraid to tell you that you're gonna have to start liking it because it is such a powerful tool for getting you clients. Even if you don't like all the different social media platforms or you don't feel like you have the time to take them all on, that's totally fine. Pick one for now, the one where your people are actually gonna be hanging out. So if your people like seeing pictures, try Instagram. If your people like seeing quick videos, try TikTok. If your people like conversations and threads and talking to each other, try Facebook. You need to figure out where your people are hanging out and then you need to have a presence there. There's so much more we can get into with social media marketing, but I just wanted to give you the brief overview and make sure that you at least pick one that you can dive into right away. And my third biggest tip for getting clients is networking with people in the industry. So especially as calligraphers and hand letterers, there is so much opportunity to network with other business owners that will give you jobs. So let's say for example, you wanted to do windows for storefronts. Well, you need to network with store owners. You need to meet people. You need to go out and put yourself out there so that they know you exist and that they know you offer these things. Another example would be if you want to be a wedding calligrapher, you need to align yourself with wedding planners and wedding photographers and all sorts of other people in the industry. The more people you know, the more referrals you're going to get. And it works both ways. You'll refer them, they'll refer you, and it becomes this nice natural relationship over time. It might be slow at the start with clients, but trust me, as that word of mouth starts growing and as you get testimonials and photos of your work and all that jazz, it'll be like a massive snowball effect. However, getting a client isn't the only consideration here. Once you find a client who's interested, you need to figure out how to price yourself so that the client says yes, but also so that you're making a profit and valuing yourself. So where the heck do you start with knowing how to price your services or products? Well, you start in this video, duh, with me. <laughs> so first of all, I want you to go to thehappyevercrafter.com slash pricing, because if you're looking for this kind of information, I have a free workshop for you. Second, I have a bunch of pricing related videos you should watch. If you just go into YouTube and type in the Happy Ever Crafter pricing, you'll find a whole bunch that'll help you out. But third, I do wanna give you some of my biggest tips in this video. So the first thing is know your worth. When you're first starting out with selling your work or services or products, whatever it may be, it's so tempting to just think, okay, well this project is gonna cost me $50 in materials and it's gonna take me about an hour. So I feel like $65 is fair or even worse, if you're like, I personally wouldn't pay more than $30 for this, so that's the most I can charge. Listen, if you're an artist who is being commissioned for something, whether it's your art, your services, your products, whatever it is, your skill is valuable and you cannot put a dollar amount on that the same way you put a dollar amount on a product from the store. If someone is coming to you, it's because they place value on the quality of the product you can provide for them and they're willing to pay for it. If they're not, they would go buy something pre-made. So you need to charge accordingly. 
Understand what your time and skills are worth and don't be afraid to ask for them. You should never be basing your pricing off of what you think you would pay because you're not the client. And don't ever feel bad for making a profit from your art. Which brings me to my next point. Number two, calculate your hourly rate. So many beginners never do this and when they do, they realize they've actually been making less than minimum wage. It's insanity. You have to do this calculation for yourself and you might be like, okay, but how do I calculate that? I'm gonna tell you in just a sec, but first, thing number three is research what other people in your area are charging. And I don't mean do that so that you can charge less and get clients more easily than them. I mean so that you can get an idea of what the going rate is in your area and not undercut the market. You need to figure out where you fit as a beginner on the scene without devaluing yourself or others. And again, you might be like, okay, but how do I know where, where I fit in? And I'm gonna, I'm about to tell you. <laughs> So I mentioned it earlier, but I have a free workshop all about pricing. It's actually taught by Joanne, who taught me calligraphy and is basically my business mentor and myself, and it's called The Five Keys to Confident Pricing. In it, we go over how to calculate your hourly rate. We actually give you free worksheets for how to do that for yourself. We talk about how to position yourself in the market so you're not undercutting anybody, how to present your pricing to clients so they actually wanna say yes, and so, so, so much more. So essentially it's our goal in that free workshop to have you leaving feeling super confident in pricing your work and your services and yourself. So if you wanna join us for that, go to thehappyevercrafter.com slash pricing. I'll link to it down below. I would love to see you there and I feel like it's the perfect way to round out everything you've learned so far in this three-part side hustle series. I hope all of this has been so helpful for you and if you need to rewatch anything from any of the three videos, all of them will be available here on my channel. For now, I'm gonna link you to another video I think you're gonna like, but again, make sure you sign up for that free workshop. It's in the description down below, and I hope to see you there. 